What's up everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Demon Souls. Where I left off in the last episode, I had just picked up a Ronin's Ring in Hiltless. And Hiltless is a katana that doesn't have a hilt. It doesn't have anything between your hand and the blade. So every time you swing it, it's just slicing your hand up. And I was wondering, what's the functional use for such a thing? It's, it's like a gun that when you fire it, it, needles shoot out of the grip and stab you in the hand. You know what? That could actually be an effective form of gun control. Oh, I think I'm onto something here. Oh, that's it. This is midi- that's- Hiltless is medieval sword control. It's the start. Those evil democrats are trying to take our swords. Tyranny! Wait, wait. Demon? Democrat? The Demoncrats. <laughs> Oh, it all makes so much sense now. Look at me connecting all those dots like Glenn Beck. Oh man, I'm good at this rambling ins insane conspiracy shit. I should be the next Alex Jones. Wait, wait. Well, the last episode, uh, when I talked to the Monumental, he mentioned that the Monumentals tried to ban the Soul Arts. They're the Illuminati! They knew that if the common folks, the depraved, and uh, and the, the draglings had access to such powerful magic, they would rise up and overthrow the NWO. It's all a big conspiracy. Oh, wake up, sheeple. The Monumentals are paying the shills on Reddit to suppress information. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. Oh, it's so perfect. Anyway, uh, we left off just before the, the boss gate. Just a short little journey there. And this boss is the old hero, and it's actually one of my favorite fights in the entire game. The old hero is completely blind. That is the old hero. So, because the boss is blind, the gimmick for this fight is that he'll just kind of stumble around without ever actually being able to properly locate you. Unless you're really noisy or unless you hit him repeatedly, he'll be able to locate you. So you just want to slowly make your way behind him, take one, maybe two quick hits, and then back off. If you take too many hits, in a row, or I mean if you hit him too many times in a row, and he does his little roar while you're still hitting him, he'll jab his sword into the ground and do the, the little AoE. It's not super dangerous, you can you have plenty of time to recover and back up from it. This also is, is another boss that's not terribly difficult. There are a lot of bosses like this in Demon Souls, but it's still- Whoa! That was dangerous. Twice dangerous. Not a terribly difficult fight, but a very, very, very fun one. Or at the very least, interesting. I, I love this gimmick. If you have the Thief's Ring on, it makes it even easier than it already is. And I, of course, do because... What was what was it I said? Uh, I think during Leechmonger, if it's worth preparing for, it's worth over-preparing for. Yeah, that holds true pretty much all the time. I do just enjoy that mechanic, though. Because if you take the Thief's Ring off and you just run around and roll in really heavy armor, he'll find you by sound. He'll figure out where you are relatively easily. But if you're doing this boss with your eyes open, you really don't stand much of a chance of losing. You know, doing this blindfolded could actually be a lot of fun. Even, oh man, even the handicap out a bit. I think I'm, I might try to do that in New Game Plus next time I face him. Equip the large sword of searching, which you get from his soul, plus... Uh, I don't remember what you have to combine it with. I think most uh, curved swords, plus... I don't know what they have to be upgraded to. Yeah, you can make the sword that he wields, and it gives you a large luck bonus. I think it is also a dexterity-based sword. 
Or at least it has some kind of high dexterity requirement. Yeah, I would love to have a blindfolded old hero versus old hero style fight. That'd be pretty fun. I also really like this arena, and just his his attack set's really cool too. It's also one of the bosses that you can pretty safely just mess with, and he's not, it doesn't matter. You can just pull the bow out at random, take your time, aim, do 40 damage, it doesn't matter, he's not gonna find you. Silly old hero. So, this episode, I'm gonna finish out the Shrine of Storms for the most part. Uh, done. Let's see. No, I still have to do uh, pure white world tendency stuff here. But that's all gonna be included in this episode. Also in this episode, I'm gonna be doing Storm King. And I should have plenty of time to do that. It's not gonna be a terribly long episode, even with everything included. I don't think, anyway. I'm just gonna sit here and screw around with Old Hero for a second. So, uh, after Old Hero, I think I'm going to go back to Satsuki. I'm gonna take care of the pure white world tendency stuff because I should get it from the end of this fight. Let's see, I'm gonna so I'm gonna go meet Satsuki in 4-1. I'm gonna get Makoto in 4-2 and find the hidden passageway real quick. I'll cut most of like the long, tedious searching out. Then talk to NPCs and finish uh, Satsuki's quest. Then we'll finish off the episode with Storm King and be done with everything but pure black world tendency stuff. And that will be uh, pretty much the wrap for 4- or World 4, yeah. So, let's see. Did I miss anything? No, there are just a couple skull- uh, a <laughs> couple skulls. A uh, couple souls scattered around here. The fall gate in the distance is the one that leads directly to Storm King's area. Most of the final boss rooms in- or most of the final boss- Final boss? Fuck, why do I keep saying that? Most of the final levels in each world consist pretty much just of a boss fight. There might be a little short run to them, but not much else. Anyway, let's go uh, talk to Satsuki real quick. Whoever that, you seem to have to bear that you come here. I have a proposal for you. Do not be afraid. You have much to gain. I am Satsuki. I seek a keepsake of my father. Have you seen the sword inscribed? Makoto, I will offer you demon souls if you can help me find it. The Makoto chooses its owner, but he who harbors self should at once be warned. The Makoto is no sword for the faint of heart. The Makoto but he who the Makoto okay, is and we'll go back to 4-2. Oh, hello. Hmm. So, since we're back here, you make this little drop-off here. An easy way to kill the Reaper you didn't see last time because our good friend, uh, Blue Phantom Blue Melody, took care of this while we were off exploring. You just come down here with a bow, make the drop down straight from the entrance, and you could just snipe him a bit. He moves too slowly to really catch up to you, as do his ghostly spectral mooks. And then when you kill the Reaper, they will all just disappear. <clears throat> Actually, if you're very early in the game, like in your first playthrough, you can just come here to farm souls. It's actually really easy and a really time-efficient way to get a lot of souls. I wouldn't recommend farming, though. The The quickest way to correct any deficiencies you might have in the game or circumvent any problems or just figuring out where you're going wrong rather than trying to straight up overpower them. Is the Black Phantom back over here? No. Thought he might respawn, but he doesn't. And yeah, this is the pit that you rescue St. Urbane from. Like I said, you when you come back here in Pure White World Tendency, the Makoto is now available where once it was not. Now we can go back to Satsuki. Actually, no. I forgot about the hidden passageway. So I finally figured out where it is. If you're... This is the drop-off at the beginning of the level. You just head left into this stairwell. Is it this? No, it's 
the second flight of stairs. Right here is where the ball is. This is going to feel really dumb if that wasn't the case. And this hidden passageway leads out to a dual katana black skeleton. Yes. And this is what I was saying, one of the two enemies of the game who has a, a chance to drop pure bladestone. And the other being a black phantom version of this guy that appears towards the end of this level in pure black world tendency. If you're farming for pure bladestone, you want to come here in pure black world tendency anyway. Even, even if you're just going to kill that guy. Because pure black world tendency increases your drop rate. So ideally you would come in here with the large sword of searching and a lot of luck in pure black world tendency and just farm him over and over again. And then cry in disappointment when it does not drop after the 200th time. And then maybe just jump off the cliff. That's what you do when pure bladestone doesn't drop. Suicide, it's the only answer. So the other treasure you can pick up from this hidden passageway, I just want to snipe some of these guys, is the white bow. Um, I think it's something like the third best bow in the game. It doesn't quite compare to the sticky compound longbow plus five, and it doesn't compare to a lava bow. But as far as I know, it's still pretty decent. Oh, dodge, yeah. Didn't think I was gonna recover in time. So, I've successfully missed a bunch of the stingrays and killed one. So, I'm gonna take that as a victory. I've thinned the herd. Now I can proceed along the cliff edge to pick up the white bow. By the way, in pure black world tendency... Oh, I forgot there's also a crystal gecko here. He always kills himself, though. This is the exact spot in pure black world tendency where the primeval demon spawns, by the way. And yeah, uh, you need to be a little careful with how you approach that lizard there if you actually want to get him, but I don't really care about the lizards that much. There are two lizards that if I were going for the platinum I would have to farm. I think they're... Uh, one is in 4-3-3 or and I can't remember what the other one is. It's for pure dark moon stone and pure moonlight stone. I think um, they might be the ones here actually. Oh well, don't really care about those upgrades. Yeah, because I don't think normal enemies drop those. Anyway, let's talk to NPCs. Thank good. I was worried. Sometimes I stop and wonder how I ended up in the Nexus in the first place. Why didn't I protect my wife and daughter, even if it meant being slain by the demons? <laughs> Please forgive me. I am over it now. Thank goodness. The Lord has not forgotten me yet. For he has reunited me with Saint Urbane. I shall serve him and pray with him. And thus express my faith in God. Mbasa. I plan to bequeath all my possessions to Saint Urbane. My grandfather's articles may contain more miracle stone shards like the one he gave me. It has no intrinsic powers in and of itself, but Saint Urbane can hear the voice of God through it. Oh, I can hardly believe it. The fact that I am helping to save the world. Oh, Saint Urbane. Mbasa. Oh, Saint M My, you have rescued the Honorable One. I express my deepest gratitude. You have relieved me of a great onus. Oh, thank God. I'm better. With Lord Abain back, the magicians will have to watch themselves. Thanks to his holy miracles, you brave battlers of demons will no longer be solely dependent on dark magic. Isn't it wonderful? Surely the demon slayers have awaited such an opportunity. Do you have any connection to Patches the Hyena? I trust not. 
He is a depraved, vile man, and he deserves no allies. I hope that an outstanding hero such as yourself is selective when making associations. By the way, I highly recommend the companionship of the jovial sage Urbane. Have you heard the rumors about Astraea of the Valley of Defilement? They claim that she and her royal knight have become demons and lead a clan of degenerate miscreants. In truth, the rumors are surely unfounded. There are all sorts of wrongdoers down there who would think up such nonsense. Yet if the rumors are true, then may she be eternally damned for her debasement of the Lord's name. Yet if the rumors are true, then may she be... Thanks to you, I was able to seek refuge in this Nexus. Now I stay here and pray, along with my disciples, for the heroes facing the demons. If you wish for benevolent protection in your fight against the demons, then bring me demon souls. I will cleanse them and perform a miracle with their power. Astraea of the Valley of Defilement? I'm not sure, but Saint Astraea of the West was accompanied by the knight Garl Vinland. She would never turn to evil with that upstanding knight to guide her. Surely it is mere slander. Sadly, the weak are prone to such backstabbing. Do you have... Vito, the Moonlight Knight, Brisaia of Isterel, and Selan Vinland. Many honorable knights have ventured into Boletaria in search of the Valley of Defilement. The vicious rumors about Astraea offend our most basic sense of respect for God's name. However, none of these great knights has made it back. Could it be that the wretched valley is so infested with grime that even our Lord's voice does not resonate there? Or perhaps it is the fate of those left behind by God? If you truly are a disciple, then you must have a talisman in God's image. Heavenly miracles occur in Boletaria through the talismans. God has granted this accursed land with a special power. It is God's way of telling us we must stand up to the demons. After the dark arts spread across the land, holy miracles were witnessed once again. The will of God is clear. We must defeat the demons, annul the curse of Boletaria, and purge the evil magicians who manipulate those accursed souls. As you know, souls are a source of evil power emanating from the demons. King Alant was overcome by a lust for such power, and has placed Boletaria in her present predicament. Old Freak and the Candle Maiden are no exception. Okay, we're back in Fort Ash 1 at the beginning where Satsuki is. Ah, bless your good fortune. And, well, your good work. Now, just hand the Makoto over to me. What on earth is wrong with you? How dare you waste my precious time? Do you not want demon souls? Fine. Have it your way. A duel will settle this. So the reason I told Makoto, or I mean the reason I told Satsuki no, is because no matter what you do, he's going to end up attacking you. And you can probably tell that because he doesn't sound like the most trustworthy guy to begin with. 
so rather than give the sword to him and risk being killed by him, eh, I'm just gonna kill him myself right now, right here, with that backstab. So Satsuki is not a terribly difficult fight. As a black phantom, he can be a real bitch. But as is now. Besides, okay, I'm gonna show off one more thing here. You scary gift spot me. So a while back I mentioned that I would come back here when I had a more complete idea of what you could trade a sparkly for what and what the rewards would be. And so here I'm back. Since we're back in Port Ash 1 anyway, might as well get this out of the way. So this is how trading works. You pick something that Sparkly wants, usually something sparkly or shiny. You drop it onto the floor and you reload your character file. And then when you pop back into the world, Sparkly will have given you whatever item corresponds to the one you dropped. Uh, there is a big list on the Demon Souls wiki dot page. And my reward for giving him the Brass Telescope is the Fragrant Ring, which just gives you MP regeneration. I don't think there's anything that you actually have to trade Sparkly for. Like, there's nothing that you can't get from Sparkly that you just can't get elsewhere. Sometimes it's a little more convenient to trade with Sparkly because it'll take shit like the Soul Remains and the All Jade of Souls, but yep, that's Sparkly trading. So now we can get underway with the Storm King, the final boss of World 4, the Shrine of Storms. The Storm King is a giant storm beast who launches other storm beasts off of his back like the Leviathan in Heart of the Swarm. Love it. Hate storm beasts. Love this boss, though. Just like the old hero, it's got one of my favorite gimmicks in the game. So from the start, you run over here to where all these shards, these giant monolithic shards of stone are poking out of the ground. There are two crystal lizards over here. They diverge in different directions. And there's also, I think there's a chunk of, of some rare stone. So you come over here and you see something sticking out of the ground. This sword is a special weapon designed specifically for this boss fight. It can be used outside of this level, but it has a special function within this level. That is it. I wish the first strike could have been a little bit more impressive. Completely whiffed all of these marauding assholes in the sky. Ah. There's, it has a very, very long windup, and it drains all of your stamina, but you can see the range is incredible. It one-hit kills all the storm beasts, and it is your primary method for damaging Storm King. Uh, if you are a bow user or a magic user, you don't have to use the Storm Ruler, but it is one of the rare opportunities that this game just freely presents you to feel ludicrously overpowered. Love this boss fight, if for no other reason than that. It is a gimmick fight, but it is a fun gimmick. And sometimes you just have to run around and coax the Storm King out. I'm not exactly sure where he is right now. So, I didn't really get to talk about Saner Bane much. So while we're waiting for Storm King to show up, why don't we talk about him? He is... I wouldn't call him 
a horrible person. He's not as bad as some of the people we meet, but he can be a bit of a prick. He is a devout follower, follower of the church, and he is... He abides by the church's word as if it were law. If you practice magic, fuck you. Because, God, that's why. He's gonna treat me well enough, though. He can be my, uh, my miracle peddling sugar daddy, showering me with all his blessings. Oh, God, this is getting really weird. I have to stop that train of thought in its tracks. Derail that shit. So, St. Urbane is kind of like the counterbalance to Sage Break, and there's Storm King. So imposing. He's the counterbalance to uh, Sage Break. They're two of the most important NPCs outside of outside of the Maiden in Black for reasons that haven't been made totally clear to us yet. They kind of play the role of an angel and devil on your shoulder sometimes, and they hold fiercely opposing viewpoints as far as magic and the soul arts go. Disparity, that's a key theme to keep in mind, but don't want to go too much into that just yet. Also, I want to talk a little bit about Suzuki in a moment, but first I'll just explain a little bit about the fight. So like I said, you use the Storm Ruler's ranged attack, it's only attack in this level, to lock onto various parts of the Storm King's underbelly, and you just swing away. He flies in and out of ranged in passes. Usually you'll get about two or three hits a pass. He only attacks one time each pass but he does some pretty massive damage when he does attack. Plus, you still have to contend with all the stingrays floating around. So when he does attack, he he uses the same type of projectile barb attack that the storm beasts normally use, except he fires volleys of them. Like so. Oh, man. They can really, really take a chunk out of you. And you recover, if you get hit by the first one, you recover just barely quickly enough to get hit by a second set. So, if you want to just deplete all of your stamina, rolling and rolling and rolling, it's pretty easy. You can also find cover behind a ruined house around here, the little village off to, I think it's my right. But the thing about this fight is that he doesn't attack you often enough for him to stand a reasonable chance of killing you. Even if you take the maximum amount of hits that he can possibly dish out to you, you're still going to be left usually with enough health to recover. Because it takes so long between passes for him to actually do anything to you. About Satsuki, so assuming we can take Satsuki's word for granted, and Makoto is actually a keepsake of his father, that means Satsuki's father might be the legendary swordsmith from a distant land known for its swordsmithing then. All of these items seem to be referring to, like the Ronin's Ring and the sword, the, uh, the Magic Sword in Makoto. I mean, it's all probably a tongue-in-cheek reference to Japan, as if Japan was an, an in-game location, given that, you know, it's a Japanese game. Uh, what with all the... Still, though, it's interesting to think that Satsuki might be, uh, the descendant of this great swordsmith. Then again, can't exactly trust Satsuki, so... And alongside the Storm King's soul, you also get a pure Cloudstone, which is used for the... Quality? Upgrade path? No! Cloudstone is dark upgrade path for shields. Quality is, I think, clear stone. I get those mixed up all the time. I get Dark Moon and Moonlight mixed up, too. Anyway, uh, you can scavenge the area for other shards and chunks of cloud uh, Cloudstone, I think. I think there is a couple of them here. Also, with the, Storm Be or with the Storm King's soul, you can forge the Morian Blade, which I mentioned a long, long time ago as being a weapon you use to enter uh, a state people call Hyper Mode or Hyper Damage Mode. And you use that alongside the Clever Rat's Ring. I don't think I explained what the Clever Rat's Ring did, either. Uh, the Clever Rat's Ring and the Morian Blade both give you a multiplicatively stacking damage boost of, I think, 50 or 60% when you're below 30% health. So equipping them together gives you, like I said, that bonus from each of them, and they stack multiplicatively. So it's a pretty insane damage boost, high risk, high reward, because you're always going to be so low on health. 
Anyway, we are done with the Shrine of Storms, finally. So in the next episode, I'm probably either going to be starting up 1-3 or... Hmm. 3-2, the second level of the Tower of Latria. It's been a while since we, vi we visited Boletarian Palace, so I'm leaning towards 1-3. We'll see. Uh, we'll see when we get there, though. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.